All right, I'm out here at Feast World in Hiroshima, Japan with one of the up and coming riders in the flatland scene, actually won an award for Flat Matters 2018, Breakthrough Rider of the Year. This is the Cisse Van Berkel interview. Thank you. How are you doing Cisse? Good. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Are you over here for just the Feast World or are you staying for Flat Arc as well? Uh, I stay for Flat Arc as well. Yes, yeah, I'm nice. here for two more weeks. Yeah, it's two movies. Now two more weeks. Ah, yes. two more weeks. <laughs> I thought you said movies, that's funny. Um, obviously you won the award, congratulations. Yes, thanks a lot. Really well deserved and it really, for me, elevated your platform as a rider, I think, and your name. Yes. And yes. how people perceive you and everything. How do you feel about winning the award, firstly? Uh, well, actually, um, uh, I was quite surprised I won the Breakthrough Award because I thought Breakthrough Riders was for actually Breakthrough Riders, like younger riders, like Julien Baron. And um, I didn't feel like, I, I felt, for me, it felt like I was there already for years. And um, I was quite surprised I won the Breakthrough Rider Award. But after I won it, some friends of me told me, actually, it's really cool you won the Breakthrough Rider Award. So, it's, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, in the end, I'm really happy about it. So, we can't talk about Breakthrough Rider of the Year without talking about Master of Creativity. Tell me about entering this competition, because it requires a certain type of person, I think, to, to go in yes. and to truly dedicate, you basically have to dedicate your life well, at, at, the, at that, that period of time anyway. So tell me about it. Yeah, yes, actually it was my uh, third year of uh, participating in Master of Creativity, the first year I uh, got stuck in the second round, I uh, didn't make it to the third round. Uh, the second year, 2017, um, I made it to the finals, which I was really happy about. Um, in the finals, I wanted to pull this one trick, which was a, a one-handed pedal packer. Yeah. Um, and I tried this trick for three or four weeks, uh, only this trick. And actually, uh, when I pulled it, I was really happy, I got it on tape. But at the same time, I was also really burned out of only trying this trick and actually burnt out out of yes. riding. So I was like, it, it's, it felt like not really fun anymore, the fun of riding. Um, but yeah, of course I was really happy about uh, pull, pulling that trick and I, I ended up fifth place, which I was really stoked about. Mm -hmm. So I did not plan to enter the 2018 uh, Master of Creativity, but yeah, actually it's, yeah, it keeps on. Uh, yeah, what, was it like once you got the taste, you were like, Yes, I gotta do this again. Yes, I gotta do. It. Yeah, it, it, actually, it, it's yeah. I don't have to prove myself or anything, but for anyone, but for myself. And I decided one day before uh, uh, before it started, uh, I want to enter. But I told myself, if I if I gonna enter, I just gonna try tricks for one session, yeah. and not for a long time. Just one session. And if I don't pull it, I will. Yeah, I have to go for another trick. So you won the uh, competition. Yes. With arguably the best trick of the year like in terms of thank you a new trick yes i know dub won the award for his incredible riding but as an actual trick one trick not a link yes trick of the year tell me you enter master of creativity with one day to go right yes did you have that trick in mind no no so no strategy going in like i'm going to get through to round one with enough to get into round two and then no, no I actually I, I see it as a process for, uh, for three years because in the, the first year, 2016, I did this kind of pedal packer variation in the second round, yes. um, which I was really stoked about and I got good feedback about. Um, and in the second year, I got this one-handed uh, variation, um, which was, yeah, felt good. And for the third year, I was just trying for the first, um, uh, for the first deadline, I just did this one session yeah. tricks. Okay. And I ended up uh, in the first round I ended up third place. Yes. Yeah. I was quite surprised yeah. because I only did this for, for, for one session tricks. And for the second round, um, I remember I was in the car driving with my girlfriend next to me with with, with my with the Instagram constantly checking Master Creativity and I ended oh, up wow. in first place. It was like, actually quite scary because I was driving the car. So <laughs> I was really like oh, man, I won, I won the, I won the second round. And I was on holidays in France. And I remember I brought my bike with just for some fun sessions. Yeah. And um, the day that I uh, uh, I know I won round two, I was thinking, okay, so I have to come up with something. Yeah, I'm, obviously I judge do. I judge the event. Yeah. Along with Marty and uh, John Yule. Um, I'm always curious. So you win round two. 
Yes. What goes on in your mind? What do you think? Did I do my best in round two? Or do you think I have to find something completely different? What, did, what, was, what, was, what was your thought process? Uh, well, my thought process was for round two was also this one uh, session links I tried and I was really happy about, uh, uh, about the, 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 the links and tricks I pulled for round two. But yeah, as I told you, it was just one session links and felt yeah, good, but, but it's all based on what other I should do, which, yeah. uh, can do uh, and showed. And for the third round, I thought, okay, I have to come up with actually something good. And yeah. then I, I was thinking like, okay, I, I, maybe I should try this pedal packer variation, but not thinking with no hands. Maybe I was thinking about doing it cross footed or something like that. Wow. And um, then I tried it in front and I was just, yeah, jamming. And I, 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 I rolled it no handed. So I was like, oh, maybe I can do it no handed. And uh, I tried it for three or four days and I pulled the four day and I got it on cam. So it felt really like a relief. Okay, I got the straight after four days. Let's chill out now. So, you get it on camera. Yes. In this day and age, it's really hard to keep a trick quiet because you, yes. <laughs> you're like, you must think, yeah, this is great. <laughs> yeah, that's How many people did you actually show the trick, honestly? I showed it to no one. You showed it to no one. I, showed, awesome. I, 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 told, I love that. Yeah, I, I told some friends of mine, I, I got this trick and I think I got a really good trick to, to, to enter the final round, but I didn't show it to anyone. But you know what I mean, like, if it's not a contest and you pull a brand new trick, yes. now do you put it straight on Instagram or do you keep it? I keep. Yeah, it really depends on the on, on the stuff. If I it's place really good, you keep it. If it's really good, I keep it. Yeah. Uh, the, the stuff I place on Instagram, so, yeah. it's, it's just more uh, the, the 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 tricks I try. I, I've tricks in the con my my contest riding. It's totally different yeah. from the normal riding. Right. That's why I came up with that hashtag too good for Instagram. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think with a lot of riders. They, yeah, I think so some stuff's stuff. wasted on Instagram personally, yeah. but. So how do you feel about social media? Um, well, actually, it helped me a lot, social media. And I think another, uh, some other writers as well. Yeah. First, I wasn't really happy about social media. I was happy about social media. It's really easy to see uh, unknown Japanese writers, or unknown yes. writers from all over the world. So it's a good platform. Um, but yeah, what you just say, uh, too good for Instagram. You see so many writers yeah. placing uh, tricks which are too good for Instagram, which is actually fun to watch. But these days when you make an edit or wait for an actual video to, to come up with totally new stuff or yeah. come in a contest with totally new stuff, yeah, that's awesome to see. Well, I had this feeling with, with Mathieu Bonnequel at this contest at uh, FIS Hiroshima. Uh, he did stuff nobody actually saw before. And the same with Rio Katagiri, which yeah. made, made this wow effect. And yeah, yeah I really love this effect. Yeah, like the old days pre-internet yes. when you didn't see anything. Yeah, it makes sense. So when I was thinking about doing this interview with you, Cissé, I realized I don't really know much about you. Who is Cissé Van Berkel? Who is Cissé Van Berkel? Um, if you could describe yourself in a sentence. In one, pff, that's really hard. Um, I just li love Flatland uh, uh, and I'm riding for 40 years. That's already one sentence, but yeah. not surprising me. Where are you from? I'm from uh, Holland, Utrecht, and actually I'm from the south Utrecht. of Holland, Utrecht. Yeah. And uh, I was born and raised in the south of Holland, uh, just a really small village. Um, and, and I was just riding, I like to ride by myself, uh, just, just this feeling yeah. of, of pulling something new. So, come from Holland, Yes. everyone that thinks of Holland and is a flatlander, if you've been in the game for a while, all you think of is flat ground. Yes. Were you around then? Um, actually, 2005. Were you exposed to flat ground and like what yeah. kind of influence did that have on your? Do you feel like it had on your riding career? Um, well, much influence. Um, when I started riding, we had flat ground, which was the contest, and actually I didn't know it was the contest. Yeah, it was for just, sure. Yeah, for a, a few contest. years, maybe three years, I think. Yeah, yeah, for, for three years, and uh, uh, it was for me 2005 or four. It okay. was my f the first contest I ever visited. It was in December. I remember well. I had my first day uh, oh, no, working no, no, no. and I went there and all the pros came out. And, yeah. uh, if I look back on it, actually all the pros from all over the world came out. Yes. And I remember walking there and uh, Vicky and Mati were sighting next to me and I was totally freaking out. Like, <laughs> whoa man, these, these are the guys from the videos. <laughs> Which no, was right. super cool to see. Yeah. I was, it was in this big, big dome where everybody was right. watching and the, the vibe was so cool. So yeah. that's such a big influence for me. 
And for me, uh, I really looked up to, to Bram Verhalle. And yeah. um, he, he was the Dutch rider, and also I think one of the, 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 the most creative the rider yeah, that was the yeah. hardest tricks uh, yeah. all over the world. And I think he made it in finals 12th place, with he was 18 years old. Yeah, and great talent. Yeah, it was amazing to see, yes. So how did you get into flatland riding? Um, actually, I started uh, with inline skating. Oh, really? With, um, uh, I, I did the freestyle inline skating, but I had to wear the, the shin pads and everything. And I, I wanted to try something without wearing all the shin pads. So I thought, well, being mixed, I just need shoes and my bike. Yeah. Which is easy, so I bought a bike because I thought it was cool, yeah. and of course it's super cool. Um, and uh, I saw some videos, and actually the first video uh, that got stuck in my mind was the Simon O'Brien uh, nosebleed section video. Okay. Yes, and yeah. the, the vibe and, and the riding is amazing. Yeah. And in my small village, we didn't have a skate park or anything else, so I so you were searching for it online, or you just came across it? I think I just came. I'm always interested, it. like. Yeah. How do you come across flat mass? How do you come across flat arc? Like, how do you come across Marty Kawapa? How do you just do that? I think it, it, how do you come across Simon O'Brien? Uh, you had the website, uh, Good Idee, yeah. now, which was okay. kind of the YouTube 15 years ago. Yeah. And I was searching for BMX and I found this video of, uh, of Simon O'Brien. Okay. That's how it came up there. And I think in the early internet days, I was really into. Uh, searching. Finding, searching, uh, new videos. So. I think everybody was. Yes, and then uh, for uh, Flat Matters Online, when, you, when you're still at the block spot, I really yeah. liked you. you. You found all the, the, the really I tried, yes. <laughs> with, the, with, the, with the old KOG stuff. And, yeah. uh, that's what I really like about Japan. You go here and you see all the, 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 the underground riders from back in the days. So yeah, I, I loved it here. Yeah. The junior riders were insane. Yeah, the junior riders, but also the, the OGs like Eno Young, Kappa, all the guys from the KOG videos. Yeah, the kids today, like, did one of the best tricks of the contest in, yes. in junior. I'm yeah. like, that's crazy. Yeah. Bar spin, whiplash to bar spin out. Like, yeah. what the hell? It's super sick. Yes. And in a contest. <laughs> so imagine what he can do if you go to a, yeah. a normal riding session and you see I'd the guys see riding it. and jamming. I think it's amazing. Um, so you got into riding. What was the first, after flat ground, did you go to Cologne? I feel like I saw you in Cologne. Yes. Big I, posse of people always cheering for me. Yes, yes, there was always, always a big Camp Holland. Uh, yeah, yeah, I love it though, because yeah. we don't have that. <laughs> so I'm like, this is awesome. Yeah, Cologne is basically, it's, it's kind of Holland. It's only two hours from my, from my home. Yeah. So I've been there for 10 years in a yeah. row. And it's, uh, yeah, the vibe is made, just really the festival vibe. And yeah. I think maybe Sietse Winkel, the other Dutch rider, uh, really influenced me really much and Bram as well. So they, they told me, you have to go to Cologne, it's, it's amazing. So I went there and I was so hooked. And at the time when I started, there were maybe maybe 60 pros, 100 amateur riders, we had master class, expert class. Yeah. That was so good, this feeling, seeing everybody ride, riding, new tricks, having the session at, uh, at the local spot in Cologne. Oh yeah, yeah, LVR. The LVR spot, yes. Yeah. Yeah, actually, it was more about having these sessions at the LVR spot, and the contest was, of course, super good. But yeah, you went there especially for these sessions. You know, I went there for like five years, and, yeah. uh, and I didn't realize LVR was there. <laughs> and really? then I saw it on, uh, I think it was Trick Stars with Matthias' section, um, and I'm like, it's in Cologne. Yes, this spot is in Cologne. Yes, right? where is it? And then I'm like, oh my god, it's, it's like. Yeah, well, one, 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 one mile from Jürgen Park. Yeah, I remember that. There was one, uh, <laughs> one year when it was... Because uh, uh, my hotel's like the other way, so yeah, I, was really? I was literally going the other way. At, at the Mess uh, Park. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, I remember there was uh, one year when it was raining and uh, we didn't have a covered spot for uh, the contest. Yeah, we had to do the contest there. Yeah, yeah so we went there with small groups, like really underground. And this feeling was so cool. You, you went there with all the, the good flat and riders, you know, from videos. Uh, I think it stressed Michael out a lot. Michael yeah. Steingraber, yeah, I remember it was his home spot and he was like, oh, you, this is going to ruin my spot. Yes, yes. To get kicked out. He yeah. was scared to get kicked out. But it was super cool, we can go there. For me, it, it, it's, it's yeah, like it's amazing, the yeah. spot, like the Mike S spot. Yeah. Go there and ride. So, from your time riding flat ground Cologne, yes. when would you say you made a conscious effort to be original and I think your, a little bit of your originality I wanted to talk about was the way you move around the bike. You're okay. one of the most elegant riders 
I think. Okay, thank you. Uh, in the yeah. way that you move, it's totally unique to you. I've never seen anybody like it. I remember you'd come down from the pedal steam and it's like, <laughs> smooth. Okay. You know, some people yeah. are like, Boom. Yeah, yeah. Tell me a little bit about your background. Like, I mean, what did you do before BMX? Is any kind of like break dancing? No, like no, that? not sure. I was really into, into balance sports, so uh, inline skating. Yeah. Um, and, and actually, when I was really young, I wanted to be an acrobat. But yeah, okay, I, yeah, makes sense. Did, yeah, yeah, but I never did anything with it. Yeah. I just wanted to be an acrobat. So you did rollerblading and then. Yes, and then yeah, I, 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 of course I did, I did tennis and I did uh, badminton and uh, all kinds of sports. But I never got really stuck in these sports. I just wanted to have something yeah. for myself. And I remember when I, I was playing tennis and at the age of 15 and I started being mixed. And I remember I was telling my parents, I want to stop tennis, I want to be BMX as my sport, like yeah. a real sport. And I remember my, my parents were telling me, yeah, you could give it a try for a few months. Uh, a few months. <laughs> for a few months, I actually see it. I think they, they, yeah. Yeah, they were really like, okay, let's see, maybe another phase. Yeah. And actually, I got really stuck in it, this feeling of pulling new tricks and, and yeah. going there. And yeah, it was, it's so cool. And about the, 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 the yeah, the, the moving around my bike. Yeah, yeah. I was always in my head whenever I've judged you and like the contests over the years. I, uh -huh. I always make a little note like, wow, this guy moves around the bike really nice. Thanks. Yeah, it's awesome. It's unique to you. It's like, yes, and thanks a lot. Yeah, actually, it's. it's um, I used to ride on asphalt, a really tricky spots. Okay. So, uh, I was going to ask you about spots. Yeah. yeah. So when I go to a contest uh, back in the days. I always felt really uncomfortable slide out on there. to slide out. So I think I was really on the OSB wood. Yeah, yeah. And uh, same for me. Yeah, oh, yeah. I think for, for, I for many, many marble, riders, marble to this. I'm yeah, like, marble, yeah. To, yeah. But the, scary. for me, it was asphalt to to, to that. Yeah, so that's even worse. Like, yeah. like like riding on ice. Yeah. So the things I could show there was just really this what I was actually doing, um, and at some point I I I, I recognized. Uh, I placed pretty well in the contest if I just did the, the, the original stuff. Yeah. Uh, so actually, I got more. Uh, it was more more of, of this. At this point, I was thinking like, oh yeah, maybe I could go more for the original yeah. stuff. And I was not really wanted to be original. Yeah. For for most of creativity, I wanted to be original, like everybody. But, yeah. Um, yeah. The writing, I could, I could. They really have fun. But also, that. like creativity comes in many forms. I keep telling yes. people this is more than tricks. Yes. It's the way you move around the bike, which is what I'm talking about with you. Yeah. You bring your own flavor. It's not a Xerox style. It's not taken uh, this guy and just gone, I'm going to ride like this guy. Yes. You ride like C. Say Van Bokel. Yeah, yeah. The only guy I can think of that rides like you. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yeah, but, but for, for me, uh, I also got my influence out of other riders, but I wanted to, to, yeah, to, sure. to, to give my own, my own taste. So, I think everybody watch, has watch you mention that, yeah. who, it's going to be different. When you got into riding, who were you inspired by? Obviously, Simon O'Brien, right? Uh, well, actually, not Simon O'Brien. Okay. I, I, I like his style, and I like his, uh, actually, the way his bike looks, I found out really cool, and his yeah. lifestyle. With, with the red areas you're talking about? No, no, it was the, the, the yellow areas. Yeah, I yellow think, one. With, okay. with the brake, and yeah. just actually a really shitty bike, with noisy from everything, with, so, so I felt like I also, also have a really shitty bike. He filmed a really time. good section in Holland, actually. Yes, yes, yeah. and I remember Intercom. that one. It's, it's at the metro station. station. It's, it's super insane. Good. Yeah. Still. To this day, and this is still a, a legend spot, a legendary spot. So I yeah. went there back in the days, also a few times a year, yeah. a, a year, and yeah, it felt really good. Uh, but actually, Bram van was a really big influence to me. But the the, the, the yeah. pedal team, of course, which is Bram, actually Bram Strick, he did yes. it on the, on the, on the handlebar. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I tried on the stand, and he, I remember he talked to me like, yeah, it's actually a cool trick. I don't, I don't think anybody had done that before. I was like, oh, yeah, man, <laughs> I have my own trick. <laughs> yes. No way. Yeah. Um, what about your bike? How, did when did you when you got into Flatland? Did you get a Flatland bike? Yes, uh, I got this. Um, first, I got this shitty bike from from uh, Second Hand, and then my first bike was uh, We the People Pony. Okay, um, from Soul Cycle? No, from uh, Paul's Boutique. In oh, yeah, Soul. Yeah. Yes. Um, because hardcore the, drinking team, man. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Aro Rickstall, right? Yeah, yeah, Aro Rickstall. Yeah. I remember I was going there with my father, and yeah, everybody 
was wearing BMX clothes. Oh, wow. Everybody's having a bike, and it felt like this, this is BMX town, man. This is it. And it was really cool. Like uh, the shop is small, yeah, but so it's a boutique. Yeah, it, it's it's really a boutique. And uh, when you come there, Paul, I never met him before at that time. But just a really nice guy, so full of passion about yeah, he uh, loves about BMX. BMX and. Yeah, then I, when I came there and I got my bike, I got free magazines, I got, I was hooked on Flatland. That's amazing. Yeah, and I remember I got this uh, Walkman with uh, a cassette of, of, of the Beastie Boys. <laughs> and yeah, I was really into this feeling. I think it was, it was the, the yeah. intricate uh, um, uh, landscape AMD yeah. section. Amazing. Yeah, and you see, see, you have this one clip of uh, Chad Johnston. Um, also have this walkman and put the music in, and then oh, yeah, I know, yeah. Just, yeah, and I started writing at this feeling of doing this the same. Like, yeah, got got into this feeling and, and actually uh, writing like like the guys from the video. Yeah. So you talk about walkman. I'll get this question in now. What kind of music are you into? Um, all kind of music. When, when I'm uh, writing, mostly it's mostly rock and roll based. My my background is really uh, really punk and rock. When okay. I was young, I played a lot of bands. Um, now I'm still in a band. Uh, You're in a band really now? Yeah, I'm in a band now. Wow. Yeah. But it's Tell really me about it. fun. Uh, no, actually, I started um, in a band with, with a lot of friends. And we were pretty we were pretty big in Holland. Like, okay, we played, played the big festivals and venues when, until I was 19. And, uh, that makes um, sense now. I saw something with you at a festival and I was like, wow, that's strange. What is he doing there? Yeah, yeah, actually like this, but it was really like I got this band life and a flatland life. So at one point um, we stopped with the band and it, for me it was really okay. So I could really focus on writing. So you have no trouble to get music with copyright for a video, you use your own. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember, <laughs> which is really weird because I didn't know it. You never thought of it. No, no, but I, I, I know this uh, was a Russian writer years ago. And he placed uh, uh, my, my song or our song under his writing video. Oh, really? Which was really weird because it's wow. Dutch punk with Dutch But he just lyrics. found it. I think he just found it. Random. And it, he didn't realize. No, it, didn't, it was really funny. But now in a band with uh, a lot of friends who, who are still into music, and it's really for fun with 50 that friends. Exactly. And we play once every half year. See, it's worth doing this interview. I never yeah. knew that. <laughs> there we go. Got a flat, land, flat matters exclusive. I love it. <laughs> So you won the master creativity, and now you have to be a judge. Yes. How do you feel about that? Because it's tricky. It's really tricky. Um, actually, um, Marty asked me to, to to be a judge, and I was like, "Wow, yeah, really cool." Uh, but after I said yes, I realized, "Whoa, well, <laughs> actually, it's it's a big responsibility." It is. It, it, it's well, just not world. fun. Yeah, and. Uh, it's really cool to see the videos, but it feels like... Yeah, you're um, going to be in the secret chat room. I, yeah, I, I will be in the secret chat room, but um, I don't have that much knowledge like you and Marty has about actually original tricks. Because I, if me, like old videos are like landscape A and B, and I've seen some videos from before which are cool, but actually original writing. Yeah, it's really difficult for me yeah. to, to say if it's original. So I'm really happy uh, that Martin and you are there yeah. so to, to discuss the things. So you can probably correct me uh, if I'm wrong, if something is original. So is, is that hard to enter master creativity? Like, that's pretty amazing. You just won it. Yes. Were you sure the trick was original? No. Just, I'm just thinking not. of that off the top of my head with you saying that. No, 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 yeah. Is that a weird feeling? Like, you put so much work into it and you're like, is it though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's not. It's not my main goal to be original. It's my main goal to to to, to have fun yeah. riding a bike and actually uh, developing my riding as a natural process. And I think this is yeah. really uh, an outcome of also developing my riding style, as you see, it as as part of, of, of uh, the first, second, or third year of master creativity. Yes. Uh, and yeah, for for this trick, it's yeah, it, it just came out and it. Put, it was cool. natural. Yeah, it was really natural, and um, of course, I, I thought of it. Yeah, I think it's original, and I don't think anybody did something yeah. similar no-handed. I, I know this. Um, it's, it's Takumi Fukuda, this guy from from Japan. Yeah, he's got this section in, uh, in yeah, Yellow yeah. Fever, and he's he's riding a, 
a cliffhanger with both feet on the bar. No handed. No handed. Yeah. And it actually felt a bit like this trick, but the more easier versions become because it's spinning, so yeah. it's, it's probably easier to hold. And then shortly after Master Creativity, if my memory serves me right, you got injured. Yes. Real bad. Well, actually, um, the, the, the deadline was beginning of 1st of October, and 7th of October 7th was the, the, the uh, we got the results, and October 6th uh, I got injured really bad. No way. Yes, and I ended up in hospital and knocked out. I was also riding a boat track, and it was really just one meter. And I remember riding there, and it felt really comfortable. Like a tarmac or? Sorry? Tarmac. Yeah, 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 like, like that. We have them in England, yeah, they're dangerous. Yeah, yeah, yes, and, and I was wearing a helmet, up. and it was just... Oh, you were wearing a helmet? I was wearing a helmet, but on just, just a normal BMX helmet, not a full face. Ah, uh, open face. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, I would just went hard. And, uh, I remember waking up in, in hospital. Wow, um, zero and, offset? No, 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 uh, it was offset, but uh, it was a workshop bike I'm, I'm using, ah, a okay. 20 half bike, and a uh, top tube bike, so probably too short. And I think I, uh, I did. Yeah, you yeah, turned. I just yeah. turned my bar and I crashed face first. I, I got the bounce here and here and here and here, Jeez. and my face was totally messed out. So I got a pretty big concussion out of it. Still, I, I yeah, I, I'm feeling it right now, which is half a year later. Really? Yes. So I was going to ask you, like, how long? Yeah, it takes a really long, long time. Yeah, for uh, sure. Yeah. People telling me, yeah, it will take you half a year or a year. And I was thinking, yeah, give me three weeks and I will be there, <laughs> man. And then after three weeks, again, six weeks, and after six weeks, I was like, well, oh maybe, maybe, maybe two months or three months. And I remember in, in December, I, I did this trip with friends. Yeah. And um, I, this was really my point, like, okay, now I have to be better. So I started uh, drinking uh, alcohol again, and I got this hangover for two weeks or something. And at that point, I realized, okay, it's really bad. I just have to wait until until I'm feeling totally okay, so yeah. I'm still, um, yeah, I'm still waiting with it and calm down. So when I when I enter a club with flashlights, I go totally, totally bad. Yeah, so, yeah. But I'm, I'm I could ride after uh, I think three or four weeks, which I was so happy about. It was okay. my biggest fear. I heard people talking having a concussion. So could you you couldn't really celebrate, could you? No, no. I remember uh, I was in hospital. I came out like my head was. Freaked out. I actually I don't remember much of the first two weeks after this uh, concussion, but the day after I, I got the, the news got in. I I, I won master creativity, and my girlfriend told me when I was in hospital, which I really didn't know much about. I was constantly telling the doctor, "Yes, I'm waiting for this uh, contest, and <laughs> now I'm yeah probably in top three because the top." Oh my God. Yeah, I didn't top realize top. it was <laughs> like that. Yeah. I thought it was like a week after or something. No, no, no. It was really like that. And, I, I came out of, so uh, out of hospital and I was riding in, in the wheelchair and all the, the nurses, they, uh, they came to me. That's so what my girlfriend told me. Yeah, yeah, we checked out your videos uh, and it, was, uh, it looked really cool, it was really fun. <laughs> I was like, okay. okay. <laughs> so it was really my, my biggest up and down in my BMX career in probably eight hours. Yeah. Um, so which, which was really bad for me. The, 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 I was constantly busy with, with the concussion, but in the end, um, in a weird way, it was really good to have this break of riding and break of work and break of everything because I have to. I had to think about what I wanted to do in, in, in life with work and with riding. Yeah. So I, I would not say I'm, I'm really happy it happened, but yeah, it's probably something good. Do you think it would make you focus more on flatland? You're like, I'm not going to go to the pump track anymore. No. No, 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 not really. I focus more on flatland. Um, no, I don't mean like in the sense of you already focus on flatland, but yes. you just realize, hey, I can't afford to have this happen again. Yes, yes. I, I do have it with, with other spots. I try uh, climbing and bouldering, I do it with friends. But, um, ah, see, that nah, makes sense. Yes, and then, go back to the riding style, you're climbing and you climb a little bit on your bike. So I understand it now. Yeah, yeah, but that's so this is where this your style comes from, I think. Yeah, but I started climbing two years ago, so it's. it's but your style's evolved in the last. Yeah, few years. I, 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 maybe that's it. But it started to make sense. Yeah, yeah but, but when I'm climbing, I'm, I'm really. Um, uh, I don't want to push myself uh, of becoming so I, I could get injured and not get into riding. So. Yeah. 
that that's that's what really uh, that's what I realized after this concussion. So I have to calm down and also. Yeah, it's my brain, and it's my body, yeah. and I'm getting older as well. Yeah. Uh, How old are you? 30 now. Just for the record, 30 years old. And when did you um, get on Deco? Uh, it was last year, and it was after, I first I got a 4-packs BMX. Yeah, tell me about 4-packs first. Well, um, I, I know Attila, I think 4-packs BMX started two years ago in Vienna, and uh, I ordered some stuff uh, from 4-packs from BMX. Yeah. Yeah, it was just good service, and I uh, talked to, to Attila, the, the owner of 4PEX BMX, cool. and he asked me, uh, uh, do you have uh, any sponsor? And I told him uh, I was running back in the days. Uh, I think I stopped the Jungle Rider, and uh, I did have some small clothing sponsor, but not quite yeah, a big sponsor. Anything, yeah. And um, he told me what he wanted to, to do with uh, 4PEX BMX, uh, just really supporting the flatland community in, yeah. in all over the world, and especially Europe. Which I really liked. Yeah, it's, cool, yeah. Yeah, it's not about big money. It's just about the love for the sport. You, yeah. yeah, you cannot make big money out of out of a shop only focusing on flatland. Yeah. And he told me this, and he asked me, "Yeah, can I? Do you want to be team rider? Can I support you in some way?" And uh, one thing led to another, and yeah, I started up being in a team uh, cool. together with with Shield van der Sompel and uh, Sebastian Grubinger, which yeah. I'm really happy about because yeah, I'm always having a really good time with them. Okay. Yeah. Nice guys, yeah. yeah, really nice, nice guys. Nice vibe. Yes, yeah, just the vibe. It, it just feels really good with those guys. Mm. And um, actually, I went to Japan two years ago, and um, it that was, was my next question. Yeah, yeah, I went <laughs> two years ago with my girlfriend, and it was first. It was a non BMX holiday, and then I realized I could check in two decks um, on the airplane. So I thought to my girlfriend, yeah, it's Japan. I have to bring my bike. Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah and it ended up kind of being uh, a BMX holiday, which was really cool. Um, and I met Hiroshi from uh, Fort Purdy, and he invited me to the to the uh, to the twenty first anniversary of Fort Purdy. It was a big party in Shibuya in Tokyo, and um, we were riding uh, this uh, the show battle there. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was just really cool to to meet all the the Japanese guys. And yeah. I think in uh, last year um, I got this. Uh, I made this video with Halex Visions, um, no old spared, and it was really, yeah, I was really happy about the video. Uh, good tricks, well produced. And after that, Hiroshi uh, texted me um, if he if it was okay to introduce me to Chad and uh, if I could ride for uh, for Deco. Ah, right. So actually, thanks to Hiroshi, uh, I got into Deco. So thanks a lot, Hiroshi, for this. Yeah, and what, what bike are you riding now? Um, now I'm riding the, the TA frame. Yeah. Before I was riding the jackpot frame, um, and I switched it four days ago to the TA frame. Four days ago? Four days ago, really two days before the contest started. So, yeah, I, I, yeah, I got this new, new frame, and I'm like, yeah, I could wait until Japan is over. But, yeah, it's, you know, it's a new frame, I want to build it up. <laughs> yeah. So I just had two more days to ride it and give it a try, and it felt really good after, after a few minutes already. Do you have anything like specific with your bike that you need to have on there to ride it? No, not really. You like no. length, big pegs. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah, the big pegs. Uh, Size you mentioned bar. This. Yes, I, I tried the, uh, the front pegs. My friend is called uh, fly bike swallow pegs. Yeah, uh, which are really big, and I tried smaller diameter pegs before. And it hurts your feet. It hurts my feet. Yeah, and especially with, with, with the pedal tricks and landing on the on the pegs. I now have these big pegs and for years, and it's feels it does really hurt. good, yeah. it feels really good, yes, and also the, the handlebars, the big handlebars, because I like to do a lot of nose wheelies, uh, you probably don't see it in the contest, but when I'm riding at home, I'm doing, most of the time, I'm doing nose wheelie variations, Okay. because I, I really like the feeling of, of, of being on the pedal and, and need power to, to ride. Yeah. Yes. So you do have something specific to your bike. <laughs> yeah, I do have something specific <laughs> on my bike. But uh, Everyone does, they just don't realize it. Yeah, yeah, that's because when I've met so many riders, I always look at the bikes. And, and you're like, oh, big man, this is really specific yeah. to the bike. And I always feel like I just have a, a BMX bike. Yeah. Yes. So you're out of Master of Creativity this year because you're judging. Yes. Any plans for a big edit this year, like Welcome to Deco edit or anything like that? Um, well, actually, um, I already filmed a Welcome to Deco, Deco edit, but um, it will take some time till it comes out. So, oh, okay. Um, I hope it That's comes cool. soon. Um, when did you film that? Over the winter? Or? No, uh, last summer. Uh, um, 
Julius from uh, Two Small Bikes. He came over to Utrecht um, and we filmed uh, a good edit. Um, but the edit was also filmed uh, analog. At some ah. point. So this takes a lot of time and I know um, yeah, it will just take time. So we just have to wait, I think. So, and uh, yeah. Um, yeah, this. So you're just gonna you're gonna put that one out, and what you're gonna do? Then you're just gonna ride this year. I just gonna ride. I, I want to ride uh, all Take the visa stops uh, yeah. this year, and yes, Cologne. yeah, Cologne as well, and uh, Rule Games, and uh, probably there will be the, the Urban Sports Week in Amsterdam. Um, I hope it will be will get confirmed, and it will be one day for Rule Games and uh, Cologne. So actually, I, I had in mind I wanted to go to some contest I haven't been to. Uh, the last couple of years, that's cool. actually yeah. seen new places. So yeah. like like the feeds, um, I really want to go to Montpellier, to um, maybe to bike days, but I'm not sure if I can make it there. And yeah. some other contests. Yes. So what do you outside of riding? What do you what do you do for a job? Or um, are you at college or something? No, like no, no. Um, uh, I used to be in college a long time ago. Okay. Um, I what did you study? Uh, I used to study uh, uh, history for a history teacher, and then I got into special education needs uh, for children with um, yet yeah, all kind of behavior problems. Yeah. And um, I started working in a in a school, um, which is a really specific school system. In Holland, you have to choose your level at the age of 12, which is stupid because it's just at the beginning of puberty. No yeah. one can tell like what are you going to do at 12. What are you going to do? And it's <laughs> it's based on your that level. It's based on your lowest grades. So if you're uh, if you grade as high for English, but for for math, it's it's, it's really, really low. You have to do every subject on this low grade. Wow. So actually, I'm um, now hired by uh, several schools to develop a new kind of school system, which we did the last few years uh, for the first time in Holland, uh, which was a great success. And I'm um, hired to, to develop this kind of school system when uh, we get uh, kids at the age of four into school and at the age of 16 or 17, they, we can choose their, uh, their level, but also on different subjects. Okay. So it's for all of this kind of new, but you see it in, in uh, some other countries, it, it's already done. Yeah. Yes. What about in Utrecht, maybe riding spots, what are they like? Um, What's your local riding spot? My local riding spot, uh, I've got one um, riding spot you probably know from the videos. It's outside, it's a basketball court, which is super flat, it's smooth asphalt, and um, it's just the half of the basketball court. So it's too bad for playing basketball, so nobody comes there. Oh, that's, 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 well, it's yeah, that's super awesome. awesome. And it's in the middle yeah, of, of the park. Yeah, you ever get or? Yeah, it's, it's, it's super, super, super smooth, yeah. super chill. And we've got this uh, marble spot, it's uh, near Central Station. Yeah, I think I've seen that one in the shots at night, right? Yes, yes, yeah. It's, uh, it's the, I've got the light all night, and it's oh, right. it, it's not totally flat, but it's okay. Yeah. Uh, but actually, actually, it's a pedestrian zone, so I'm not allowed to ride my bike there. Um, so but is it strict or no? It was I rode there for for three years um, without any problems. All the policemen come to say hello. They told me everyone's telling me, "Ah, oh, so cool, what you're doing?" And then a few months ago at Half past nine in the night on a Wednesday evening, I got this ticket from a, from a guy, uh, from not even a police officer, but some guy just lower. Really? Yes. And I asked him, yeah, what's the problem? I come here for three years. Actually, I opened a place for the local government uh, with a bike show, and now you're telling me it's a problem. I come here for so many years. I've talked to your colleagues, and he talked, uh, and he talked to me. He, uh, yeah, he, he said to me like, yeah, it's, it's yeah, for me it's okay, but it's my boss. Which I thought was totally bullshit because he, yeah, he just wanted to make a point, and yeah. I was arguing with him for 20 minutes, half an hour, and then I got this ticket for um, not uh, for, for riding my bike in the pedestrian zone. So I asked him, uh, yeah, I want to talk to your boss, um, which yeah, he, he found out a bit difficult. So the next day I called the local local government, I sent some emails, and one week after I got called by the local government. Uh, yeah, it's uh, really weird what happened. So uh, we will give you the permission to ride there. So now I got this permission to. But did you have to pay the ticket? No, I don't. No, no, no. Oh, winner! Yeah, it was a situation. Cool. Yes, yes. <laughs> Which was uh, yeah, Ooh. it was really fun. Yeah, that's yes. a, that'd be stressful if you lose your spot. Yes, it was really um, yeah, it was really stressful. But I'm what? really happy. I've got, got this spot and I got the, the other spot, but it's all outdoors. So I didn't have a really decent winter spot. That's what I was about to ask. Yeah, Win winter's cold in 
Holland. Winter is cold, so I'm so really now used to snow. Now not really much rain and, and, and wind. And, and so you ride in the rain as well? I ride in the rain, yeah. When it's raining, I'm just riding on asphalt. So it's, yeah. Like we did in England for years. I think so, yeah. yes. I did it for years. Yes, it's, uh, I'm getting it's a bit jealous on seeing people having a good time on asphalt. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's, it's riding. And, and I like this feeling of actually going outside. Um, when it's raining, having a, a good it session. It does feel good, but it feels really good. It hurts yeah. your body. Yes, and actually, uh, I'm always looking forward to, to when the when the floor is dry, right, so I can uh, actually work on tricks. Yeah. Do you find any benefit to riding in the rain? Like in the sense, I found it like tricks are easier as soon as it's dry. Yes. The yeah. You find that? Yes. Really. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. Tricks are way more easier, and it's uh, yeah. I think, I think it it works out. In a way, grip tape on the hex. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's why I ride in grip tape. Yeah. Something specific about bike. Yeah. Always grip tape. On the yes, yes. It does work. Yes, and also the pedals now with the motor pedals, it works in, in, yeah. in the way as well. Yeah. Nice. Um, what about modern day? You just got on deco, four pegs. Yes. Working situation. It's all dialed. Do you also get support to come to events like this, like the feast? No. Your sponsors, or no. you just for saving up? I just saving up. I do. Um, I've got my my normal job, normal day job, which yeah. is yeah, actually around two days a week, and I write uh, a lot of shows and workshops, and actually the money I make out of shows and workshops. Oh, you do? Okay. Yes. Or teaching kids flatland, or um, actually not specific flatland because I think it's. To, I, I don't want. I, I don't want to um, uh, like I'm telling everybody it's freestyle. If I'm teaching them flatland, it's not freestyle. They get stuck into flatland, and I want to give them some choice about. I call skills. it skills actually. Right? I teach flatland. I call it yeah. Flat skills. skills, and of course I'm, I'm, I'm doing. Uh, but I'm trying not to put a label on it. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to put a label on it. I just tell them like there's flatland. I can show you flatland tricks. I learn how to bunny up. Every every kid wants to learn yeah. how to jump, how to bunny up. Um, and I learned some. I learned them some really basic skills. And for me, it's about yeah. If they get stuck into bike riding, it's cool, and they can choose if, if maybe BMX or flatland or, or street or mountain biking. It's fine to me. Yeah. Just just find something they love to do. Yes. So from winning master creativity to tackling the three minute run in a contest, what kind of preparation do you do going into a contest? Um, I'm gonna t say I'm getting the sense. Yes. No, no, no. I, 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 I. Did you I check prepare. your bike two days before? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. I, I, I prepare. I, I just. Uh, what I was check, checking? How before. do you prepare? I prepare uh, in a way. Um, I'm thinking about bike and tricks, um, and uh, I was. Um, I think I decided this some years ago, when I was uh, when I'm at a contest. Um, I remember always, maybe two or three riders, which I think are really cool. Just have a cool riding style in some way. And I was realizing that these are always the, the riders which are uh, who are not doing the tricks everybody else is doing. So I can do off-backer, I can do cliffhanger, I can do uh, um, uh, hitchhiker, I can do steam roller, G-turns. Uh, but it doesn't make any sense for me to show that a contest because everybody else is doing it. So yeah. I, I was thinking, yeah, the, the, I want to be uh, a rider. Uh, I want to be like one of those riders who everybody remembers, or yeah. some guys remembers. And of course, I'm being at some contests, so everybody, a lot of people know my riding. I think, no. Um, but that was now I'm training specific on, on the on the on those tricks. Actually, not combos, but tricks nobody else is doing, or yeah. some other guys doing. So, but you like do like. Three in a row. Do you do the three in a row, five in a row? No, I'm just thing. doing this uh, warm cold session. So my warming up is uh, to trick. pull my my uh, my contest run, and I do it for maybe two, three times, and then I go for for my for the normal session. So actually, I'm training to to, to do my run in a uh, yeah with not with, with no warming up. Yeah. Yes. Do you, now from. You mentioned your inspirations like when you were growing up. What about yes. now? What inspires you now with Flatland? Um, what inspires me now with Flatland? Yeah, I think like, that those really small steps of you, the, 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 this, this process of seeing something, thinking about something, uh, pulling it, and then actually this feeling inspires me. Um, but also for, for contest, just the, the, 
the, the getting together, uh, seeing all the riders, it's super cool to, to hang out. Uh, actually realizing having these sessions, which I dreamed about when I started, actually yeah. being, being the guys out of the, the video, which I uh, watched for, for years ago. And yeah, I've got different kind of motivations uh, for myself, for my solo riding, but also with riding with other people. Yeah. Uh, but also getting kids into BMX riding. Yeah. Do you still watch as many videos now? No. No. Yeah, I thought I figured that. Yes. I, uh, no. We got, no. Do you I, find you get inspired um, too much? If you like one guy, maybe, or one. Yeah, I don't know why. Um, it doesn't feel like I, I need to, to watch it now. I, yeah. I, I like to watch um, uh, some uh, really original riders, but also on the skateboard or on BMX street. Yeah. Oh, you like skateboarding? I like skate. Yeah, actually, I like the, the video editing of skateboarding. Like yeah, the, the, the five big budgets. Like, yeah, like the um, yeah sometimes big budget, but also the, uh, uh, Gumiyagi, the Japanese rider with the wobble skateboard. It's, I haven't seen that one. Yeah, it, it's just crazy original. It, yeah. it, it's, it's actually it's, it's really at this edge of is it actually a skateboard video or more of an art project? Yeah, and that's what I really like about nice. these kind of videos. Just guys uh, trying to actually bring something new to the game. So, if you were to describe Flatland to somebody, yeah, somebody comes to Feast and says, "What is Flatland? What what would you tell them?" Um, Actually, what I wanted to tell them is not what I actually tell them. Uh, mostly it's about, because I, I, I've had this question for so many times. And yeah. I think everybody does it. Yeah, it's breakdance on a bike, which is not. No, but agree. Like, like, people know breakdance and people know a bike, so it's easy to understand. Yeah. And, um, I'm always intrigued if there's going to be an intelligent answer to what is flatland. No, I don't think there will. Now there probably will be, but like an easy way. Take some some more sentences. An to, easy to way to say what we do. Yeah. Now it's. Uh, I think we, we don't need it if we, if the sport grows with events like fees getting to a, to a bigger public. We probably don't need to explain what flatland is. And actually, um, for me, it's yeah, it's okay to, to explain what flatland is um, because you, you see the people who actually take time to to understand it, and actually people who just doing the Instagram, okay, take more than 50 seconds to explain, I'm out. Yeah. And that's what I like about the social, social media run. generation. Yeah, the social media generation. You see you see swipe. all people coming swipe. by and, and actually, yeah, swipe. Swipe, swipe. Seen it and, oh, you Did tried you see something. my video? I yeah, yeah, already. Like this. Yeah, no, you try <laughs> something more than three times, okay, you stuck in it. Yeah. But actually, the biggest part of Flatland is getting stuck at, at, at this, the, the trick and trying it for, for, for hours, for days, for months. Yeah. That's flatland, yeah, and that's will never gonna change. And, and there, there are always some people who actually see this. It's really hard yeah. to, to do, even if it looks easy. Like, do you have like a set amount of hours you ride a, a day? Like, what's a what's a typical session for you? Um, well, I try to ride every day. As or do you ride? Day. Do you ride till you've got what you wanted done? Uh, sometimes it depends on, on, on uh, several periods of the year. Or during winter, I just ride, and I'm just being happy. I'm able to ride that day. If it's half an hour or an hour, it's okay. Um, during summer, I ride until I'm most of the time until I'm just tired. Yeah. Um, In the summer, does the rain stop you riding or no? No. No. Yeah. I know sometimes, if, if, if I know, uh, I know if, if, if it's raining, question. but if it's gonna, uh, if it's good weather after two hours, I, yeah, then it's gonna stop me. And I, will continue I know it sounds like a stupid question because. Obviously, I'm English and I've rode in the rain for years. Yes, yeah. but actually, in the summer, if it rains, I'll stop riding. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's right. But actually, in, in England, it's it's your mentality is, is even more hardcore. I remember I was uh, when I'm in Holland at a festival, and it started raining. Everybody's hiding. But I was in, in England, and it started raining at the festival, and everybody was not giving a shit. No, nah. and just standing there. So, it, yeah. I remember I was there in LA once for the Intricate Jam, uh -huh. and we went to. Uh, the Long Beach Marina spot. Yes, it's on uh, a couple of intricate videos. Trevor Mayer's riding there and stuff. And it was like, I want to say it wasn't even rain. <laughs> and I was learning new tricks. And there was literally everyone just on the sidelines watching. Yes. And I'm like, this isn't rain. Yeah, but if you're used to it, then it's like the, yeah. the, the the spot is so grippy. Uh -huh. It's not even like my, my feet weren't even moving on the pegs. You know. Yeah. 
and I was like, this isn't right. Yeah, yeah, but it's also for, for when it's raining and sometimes I try like, uh, this is also the reason why I don't pivot that much, because I use the right in the rain. And, uh, yeah, that can get dangerous. Yeah, it can get really dangerous, so I'll that's that kind of tricks I don't do. Cross foot pivots doesn't work in the rain. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think so, yes. I learned that one in a hard way, even yeah. with grip tape it doesn't work. Okay, yeah, that's, that's still why I don't, I, I learned some pivots and I can do some pivoting, but only when it's dry. Yeah. So when it's raining, I just skip uh, some part of my riding. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's, that, that's what I like about uh, Sam Fouch riding. He's, I think He's he still would, going. Yeah, but it was probably back in the days also in the rain. In the pissing rain. Yeah, the, uh, yeah you see it in his riding. It's, it's, you can do it in the rain, you can do it when it's dry. I remember once I was riding with him <laughs> and uh, it was pouring down where he lives. He lives in Manchester. Okay. And it was horrible. I couldn't even ride. <laughs> like I can't even see for the glasses. And he was learning. Uh, he learned a new trick. It's on YouTube actually. I put it on there. He did a far hundred backwards whip into crack pack of pivot, crack pack of turbines. But with a pivot. And the grips just come off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> they still hold it. Yeah, these, Insights. These, yeah, these riders are. It's crazy. I mean, you, you but it's a mindset because. Um, there's just no way you could, I could do this. It, yeah, it, it was, probably you, you can, but you I, don't no, want I to. Couldn't, I couldn't even see. Yes. It's physically not possible to see. Yeah, but it's always because I have glasses. Just joys, you're, you're a man. Yeah. yeah, for you, it's, if you wear glasses, it's probably more yeah. difficult. But I remember uh, Bram van Halle yeah. when he was young. I was heard the stories uh, of him riding, even when it was raining. Of also when it was raining, yeah. so I was like, wow. Yeah. So you can ride in the rain. I always remember he did a hitchhiker 360 kickflip, landed oppo crossfoot hitch. Yes. Insane. <laughs> Why would you do that to yourself? One of the best tricks I've ever seen, actually. Yeah, but so many tricks he, he did. It's like stupidly it's hard. Yeah. With, with, I mean, it's hard enough to do hitchhiker kickflip. 360 to regular? Uh -huh. No, to crossfoot. Yes. Opposite. But also, got this, this, this perfect view of what's difficult about a new trick. Yeah, actually, I think he, he should be a good judge. He would be a good judge for. He judged a few times. Yeah, just a few times. Yeah. Yes, he, he knows what's difficult, and I think Moto also knows what what's difficult. He can do almost every trick. Yeah, and the same for for, for you and for Marty. Yeah, you know what's hard. You know what's difficult. You know what's what's. You also got the knowledge of what's original. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's important. Yeah. So, how do you feel like your riding is going to develop now from winning master creativity? Um, you've been to Japan a few times. Yes. Um, no doubt got inspired by that. Go home to Holland. Mm -hmm. Planning to do more contests this year. Don't have to film a video part. What What are you thinking about your riding now? Do you want to change it up, or do you think you fa Do you think you found your style? And that, then you're gonna. No, I. I think you found your style. Yeah, I found my style um, in some way, but. Uh, like I told you, my contest riding is totally different from my normal riding. Uh, maybe, sh maybe show it sometime. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Just for the sake of it. Yeah, but yeah, for me, it doesn't make any sense to show it, to show tricks uh, other riders can do as well. It's, yeah, for me, for some tricks I'm proud of, I can show like some, some yeah. mostly pivot stuff because I really suck at pivoting. Um, it feels so unnatural, the pivoting. Really? I would never guess that. Yeah, it just feels really, really uh, not natural. And if you see riders pivoting, it looks so cool. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't really have a plan uh, to see what, what happens. Um, and um, like always, pedal tricks feel really good for me. Just the, the strength of the riding. Yeah. Um, but I'm always thinking. I'm and the inside, much. you go like inside direction. Yes, yes. That's, that's what I like as well, that the, the spinning feeling uh, yeah. or the riding feeling. But uh, if you see riders like James White, um, it's really cool. He still rides that hardcore. At, I don't know how, what was his age, but I want to. He's actually, old. Yeah, he's old. Yeah. But <laughs> sorry, probably, James. But th that's that's my goal. Sorry, sorry, James. Yeah, Thanks a lot. <laughs> but that's my goal to to, to yeah. still be able to to ride and to, to do whatever I, I yeah. can do. But I think with the pedal trick. Tricks, it's more harder to, to do it, um, to do it in, in, for years. Yeah, so did you ever break any cramps pedal steams or not? 
Yes. I, yeah, I'll break yeah, it up. And cranks, um, like some, somebody buy parts. Pedals? Yes. Yeah, pedals not that much, but mostly cranks and, and frames about the hitting the frame. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and my wheels, they're always, yeah, you can hear my wheels in my videos. Oh, the spokes, yeah, yeah it's spoke. crazy. Yeah, yeah it's probably like, because yeah. Of, the, of the pressure and because I don't like, really do care that? about it. <laughs> but it, it works out, so it's, uh, it's, yeah. still, it's still rolling. So with the Dutch culture, it comes across quite chilled out. Um, Amsterdam, obviously, all the stuff with marijuana and everything. Would you say you're a competitive rider? Um, in some way, I am competitive. Yeah. Yes, I go to contests. Of course, I'm. But you can go to contests and not be competitive, if you know what I mean. You'd like. Yes, yes, of course. But if if I would be. Um, would you say that's something that's built over time? Yes, of course. I, I want to, to, to Actually, it's it's a new goal to to see if I can make the original tricks in a contest. And of course, um, I don't. Yeah, I, I didn't qualify uh, for the for the fees, uh, for the semi-finals. It was close. Yeah, yeah, but it, 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 I felt totally okay with it because all the riders they rode really well. That was so, hard, one, yeah. yeah. And it, I think that this was one of the best levels I've seen in years. At the, yeah, at finals the was nuts today. Yeah, as well. So it, it was, yeah, it's okay about that, and uh, I only have to, to prove it for myself. Like, I, th I think so. What was it like watching the finals today? Were you thinking as a Flatland fan, or what, mm -hmm. were, what were you kind of thinking? Yeah, I was really watching that. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. When that final started, who did you think was going to win before Rio obviously dropped that amazing run? Um, be honest. To be honest, I was thinking Dominic was going to win. Yeah. Um, because his semi-final was unreal. Was unreal. No, actually, I thought yeah, Dominic could win, but that was. Like the semi-final was unreal, but yeah, actually he, I was, he, I was thinking Ma Matthias wouldn't win because I thought he, he like his uh, qualification in the semi-final was looked um, uh, like quite safe for him, yeah. and I thought he, he could drop some really really big bombs in the, in the final, which he, he did. He, he rode really well in finals. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah Rio was amazing. I'm always yeah. interested, you know, like when you're watching on the side what uh -huh. the riders are thinking, like... Yes, yeah, but that was thinking, yeah, everybody can ride well, like mm. this fine, everybody can, if everybody rides well, everybody can win. Yeah. And uh, I was, I think I was talking to you right before the finals, like, who can win and what should Everybody. Ever, yeah, you told me, yeah, if, if everybody rides well, it's just about the details. Yeah. And that's it, that's what, that was really cool to see, like, just hoping that everybody should have a, a good run and make the Make the heat out. No, not everybody have a good run. That'd be a nightmare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, for you it would be a nightmare. But, but yeah, I always say when we're to see. <laughs> when we're talking about judging, I always say, what's going to happen when you have a final top eight and eight guys ride flawless? Yeah. One year in Cologne, four guys ride flawless. I remember. And yes. that was a headache. <laughs> yeah, but and then it's details. Yeah, and th then it's flatland, and yeah, still details, and then it's still like the mistakes game. can be there, like. Yeah. Yeah, Somebody laid the bike down, like... Yeah, but th then it's really easy. Yeah, yeah, you touch the tire two, two times. too many times. Okay. Repeats, maybe. Yeah, that's... There's details. Yeah, but you cannot... Like, that's better. There's so many different styles. Uh, there's so many so, different tricks. So, uh, do you think judging master creativity could help your riding? Uh, yes. Let's talk about it in a... I think it can help like, my riding. You think about it in a philosophical way. Like, yes. Um, it can help my riding actually about... Uh, actually thinking about um, yeah. what's original and what's hard and why it's hard. Yeah. So I probably have to, to try some tricks as well. Which Yeah, I'd like to do that. Yeah, and, and actually it's good to get, know. Get, get the feeling. Yeah, it's good to know. Yeah. And actually I hope there will be a lot, a lot of riders coming with tricks. I, I, yeah, I wasn't even thinking of. I'm sure it surprises yeah. me every year, yeah, to be honest. That's a, yeah, that's what I really like. Like your trick yeah. surprised me, I was like, Rewind. Let's watch this again. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Yeah, but uh, that's what I like. Well, I like to be surprised. That's yeah. where the must-watch thing comes from. Yeah. Because if you imagine you have 500 edits, what is the edit that you want to watch? And it's actually Matthias gave me the idea for the must-watch. He said, hey, Ephraim, uh, yeah, I really like your website, but I can't watch every video. You need a way to separate. And I'm like, hmm. I don't want worst Matthias impression ever, sorry. Um, but 
you need a way to separate. Yes. Was his point. So I was thinking about it and then that's when the must watch thing came up. Uh, yeah, I think that the must watch the must watch tag is now used for for um, uh, like different riding styles or something really original, something really hard. Um, yeah, it can also be like really well edited. Yeah, and it can be sometimes. Yeah, yeah, it can be. And, and for me, flat metals online is really about hardcore. But also metal. on the flip side, it can be really badly edited. Yes, yeah, still be a must well. watch. Yeah, because for me, we're not filmmakers. Yeah. That's, uh, Some people have the luxury of like, a visual making the video. Yeah, but it, that, that's, it, it's, I mean, it's I wish I could have. That. <laughs> yeah, of course. And, and I think he can make anybody look good. Yeah, and Tom is amazing. He can yeah. do. He, he's he's, a, amazing, he's a magical. Yeah. But that's flatland. You just place your your phone there and ride for hours and hours until you pull the trigger. Yeah. So you use a phone to film. I use a phone to film yeah. as well. Yes, um, and yeah, that's flatland, and that's what I like about about flatland as a line. Um, yeah, you get those people actually really like the tricks and go there for, for seeing the tricks. Yeah. And if somebody produces a well-produced edit, it's probably not that interesting for, for the hardcore riders who just want to see the tricks, but it makes it more interesting for people outside of Flatlands to actually like make Facebook flat kind of generation. Yeah, Facebook, yeah. but to actually uh, make Flatlands and be makes bigger. Yeah. Which is also like skateboarding. Good. Like skateboarding. Yeah. And this, so th that's what I like uh, about. Uh, the, 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 the mainstream videos. Uh, yeah. I really like to, to watch Matthias is riding. It's, yeah. it's stylish, it's original, he's got hard tricks, and it just looks good. And if you walk to a street rider, if they talk about Flatland, they know, they know his name. Yeah, yeah, they know his name. And so it's, it's really good. Um, and I also like uh, the really hardcore riding of people pulling, like Brandon the Browcraft. Yeah. It's, it's just, just one. Uh, Savage. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, is there anybody, you mentioned you don't really watch a lot of videos, but is there anybody you see... Ah, oh, there's a video from Matthias, there's a video from Brandon, you just mentioned... Is there that rider that... Yes. You don't have to mention names, but is there... What pulls you to watch a video now? Uh, is it the must-watch tag? Is it, like, yes, a name? Yes, of course. Of course the, the, is the, it a name? It's, it's a name. It's a sev several names. Yeah. Um, and if I don't know the name, then it's the must watch tag. Yeah. Um, and also, I still have this thing with uh, if, if it's a Japanese edit. You want to watch it? I want to watch it. Yes, I get that. I do that. <laughs> I think everybody does it. Yeah. I actually like watching the, the junior kids and seeing the level. Yeah. I think where I teach Flatland is like interesting for me. Yeah. But also, like today, one of the best tricks of the contest was in the junior class. That's insane. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I can't even believe it. Uh, Did you see that? No, I haven't seen it in the room. I've, 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 talked, I've heard so many people talking about it. Barspin whiplash to Barspin out. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's a sick. pro trick. Yeah, it's super sick. But that, that's, that's, Could have been in Master Creativity. Yeah, but that, that's, uh, that's what I like about these kind of contests. I think he's like 11. I want to say he's 11. 11? 11 or 12. He was really young. Okay. Insane. So, I hope it's not on tape, so you can enter the master creativity. <laughs> <laughs> but I've already seen it. Yeah, That's okay, you've seen it. Yeah, okay, so it's not, but... It wouldn't but, work. Yeah. But it's, it's oh, super cool. I like, like, yeah, I didn't, yeah. <laughs> but like, this is super cool. That's what I like about contests. contest. Uh, when I watched uh, uh, the live feed of a contest, or uh, when I rewatch it, I was... Uh, I prefer watching the qualification and to search for the names, which you normally don't see in finals. Yeah, so it's the underdog. The, the underdogs, yeah. The yeah, like this or somebody like that. Yeah. Yeah, but actually, uh, like uh, I remember uh, years ago in, in uh, Flat Arc, you had Fumichi Kana uh, for the first time entering uh, the finals. And yes. Like I really want, want to see that guy. Like yeah. Kind of a new style of riding, kind of new new things. The guy that did the spinning foot jam to Steve. Yes, this guy. Yeah. Yes. But also, it's for for every contest. I found that video by accident. Yes. Yeah, searching. You're searching for? Flatland videos from Japan. And <laughs> okay. Found it, I was like, holy shit, yeah. this is insane. Yeah, but that was back in the days, you, you just search on YouTube for Flatland and then most recent, so you, you could actually see which videos were uploaded. I actually don't do the most recent thing. No, oh yeah, I, I did it for. for I did I'll try it a number of different words and it normally works okay. better for me. Yeah, for, for now it just. But it's I weird. Wait whole YouTube. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I don't do it as much because you can spend all day on your phone and 
No, it's yeah. too much. And like, it's probably the, the Instagram. Movies. 10 hours a day on flat miles yeah. would be insane. Yeah. It used to be like five, six hours a day. Really? Yeah. It's a long, long To build time, up yeah. the website. Yeah. Yeah, it's probably, but yeah, you've 10 built years. Up and yeah, it's, it's probably difficult to, to, to yeah. keep it up to date. With yeah. this because there's so much stuff going on now. Yeah. So what do you, you mentioned the workshops earlier, what do you tell kids about what you do? Um, what I tell kids? Because they hey, what's your name? My name's Cissé. Actually, do do? I don't tell them that much. Okay. Um, they ask to see tricks or? Yeah, if, if, they, are, if they, ask, they ask me to, I always show them some tricks, like this is possible. Is it the right? same as in England? Can you do a wheelie? Of course, <laughs> it's, it's everywhere in the world. It's Can international, okay. Yeah, but I, uh, I wonder. I, yeah, but I really can do a wheelie. Because it's, like <laughs> it's like a thing in England. Yeah, it's a thing everywhere. It's Mountain bikes, like yeah. falling ass down the street, wheelie. Well, like. Yeah, but it's in Holland, it's in Europe, it's in... It's in, it's in oh, really? Okay. It is everywhere. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's well, it was just an English like. No, 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 no. No, you remember this? this well, I was cursed. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are cursed. Sorry. Yeah, no. If, yeah, everybody's cursed probably of oh, this. Wow. But it's yeah. Uh, I, uh, for me, my main goal is to let them uh, not telling them about BMX, but let them experience what BMX is about. Yeah. Not only the riding, but also the uh, the lifestyle and also the, the, the falling down yeah. and just the chilling. And I heard it from from parents of kids. Uh, they really like it, the, the, the vibe of, of, of the workshops. It's not about being competitive, it's really about, uh, yeah, it's, it's, you do it because you like to do it, and it's yeah. not about you, you prepare for a contest or something. Yeah. No, just do it. Yeah. That's it. That's the, kind of like your philosophy, really. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, for, yeah. The, for the workshops, it is. Do you think that comes out of the Dutch culture? No. no. I would say it's. Yes. It's interesting, like when I was judging this weekend, you could see certain styles from different countries. Really like this. This guy's French, this guy's Japanese. Japanese, definite style. Yes. All look very similar, if you actually really look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a way. Yeah, I can imagine. But probably the, the, the riders who enter the competition, Yeah. which is just a fragment of all Japanese riders. Yeah. But also for, uh, because th there's so many riders around, also here in Hiroshima, who don't enter the competition. If, if we also, we, we just went to the spot for a session, and you see so many fresh styles yeah. over there. But just the guys who don't, want to, or don't need to enter the competition, don't feel like to enter the competition. And that's cool. And you also have this, this really competition riding um, about, you have, you have to show different styles in Europe, you have to show different kind of tricks, yeah. front wheel, back wheel, um, and I think it's, it's uh, at least for, for me it felt like uh, a few years ago it was really like this, you see riders doing a front wheel link, a back wheel link, a uh, power trick, uh, all, all these kind of styles in, in, in one one uh, run to have the perfect run, yeah. but uh, luckily it's becoming more focused on your style. Yeah. And not about having everything doing. Of course, double capable of doing power tricks, double capable of doing front yeah. wheel, but he shows his style, his back wheel, pivoting, yeah. crazy stuff. Yeah. It's the same though with other riders. Which yeah, like Rio. Like. And yeah, yeah. Yes. YouTube, like two different styles, I yeah. think. Both, and Dub also, I was thinking that today. You have three killer riders on the back wheel. Yes. And all so different. All so different, yes. So if they, different. if they all ride well, yeah. Headache. Yeah, <laughs> really. <laughs> that's what it is. Yes. And that's also, and this also probably really difficult uh, for, um, uh, for some riders for muscle creativity because their riding style doesn't really fit the format. No. You, you have some riders really... Um, 30 seconds, you mean? Yeah, the 30 yeah. seconds thing and going for the hard tricks. Yeah. And there's some riders who actually. Um, Were you thinking just one trick when you landed that? You're like, that's enough. Yes. Yeah. For me, it worked out. Yeah. Actually, most creative is for me. I always like to do just one trick. That's it. Because I yeah for longer combos, I have to train the longer combos. And it doesn't feel right. And there's some other riders who actually really fit well in, in the muscle creativity uh, uh, format. Yeah. 
but also some riders do not. And yeah, that's also flatland. It's also a contest. There have to be some boundaries for every contest. Yeah, would be a bit scary, wouldn't it? With no boundaries. Yeah, it would be really. You scary. can do what you like. Yeah, yeah I remember there was this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they, 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 they had this contest in Japan, the, the, the no contest run contest. Okay, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and then you just can just ride until you pulled. Until you, you drop. Yeah, until you drop. So every rider got a, a nice a, idea though. Yeah, they had a run of 20 minutes, yeah. which is super cool, <laughs> of course. What's, what's your favorite thing about the flatland culture? <sighs> so much, everything. The, but if you could put it down to something. What would it be? Always curious about. Actually, I've had quite a few deep chats recently with people about the flatland culture. Actually, the culture, um, the, uh, what I like the most about the culture is, is you meet people, and uh, I've got my friends at home, which I cannot talk about BMX because they're not BMX riders. Yeah. And when I come here, in the end, everybody is actually for the same reason on the bike. Yeah. Um, just like to, to, to try tricks and they start probably because they thought BMX was cool yeah. or in some way so we're all different but also kind of the same yeah and the common bond of the, the common bond and everybody knows this feeling you just go home and practice for hours and they everybody knows this feeling of pulling a trick and actually have nobody to tell it so yeah actually yeah this feeling was it scary returning to riding flatland after your injury? Yes, it was really, really scary. Did you think about riding with a helmet for a while? No, 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 no. Actually, um, I heard some people telling me uh, they, t they, they lost their uh, the feeling of, of, of balance for one year. Yeah. And really, that's a really... Jesse Puente had that, yeah. Yes? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know this. Yeah, he didn't ride for a year. Yeah. We just got him back on his bike, the one love jam. That's crazy. He was, he was scared to ride. Yeah, that's so crazy. Yeah, and I, uh, yeah for me, my, my main goal was to, to get on my bike as soon as possible, just to, to, to get this feeling of, okay, I still got my balance, and I can be riding you know, maybe after a few months, but I got my balance, so yeah. it's okay. So that was my biggest fear. Yeah, to, to Going back to the question I asked you about your style, mm -hmm. do, you, do you stretch? Yes. Because you're quite tall like me. Yes. Yes. You have a look. What's, what's like your routine before you ride? Stretching routine? Um, yes, first, yeah. Um, my arms and my uh, wrists, my neck and my legs. Yeah, it's not really uh, a routine, but it's more like I, I, want, I want to feel... But it, it is a routine. It, it, it is a routine. And it's, for, it's a daily thing? Yeah, it's a daily thing. Oh, actually, actually, when I ride, yeah. uh, then, I, then I stretch and for, uh, for contest as well. Uh, more stretching to, to, to get my, my uh, muscles more. Yeah. So you're the first interview I've done about winning a flat matters medal, like face to face. Yes. How did you feel when you got the medal through the post and it's like got the person, your name on it? I thought I wanted to have a personal touch to it, but uh -huh. how, how did you feel about it? Well, actually, I never won a medal, so this was really cool, and I, I knew the medal from only from the photos from flat matters from the last <laughs> yeah. few years. So. You did. This was really like, yeah, nailed it, man. I've got a flat medal. Yeah. And so this, yeah, it's really cool. I've got this, uh, I've got this Master of Creativity trophy and the flat medal. medal which yeah, that trophy is for, for, for me, it's, it's, it's really like stuck together. Yeah. Like without that, I couldn't have this. So it's, yeah. Yeah. It felt really good. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Let's wrap this up, Cissé. Any final kind of words or advice for anyone? And um, any advice? If you want to ride BMX, just buy a bike and try it. And it, it will take hours to learn, but it's really fun just to do it. And if you don't like it, try something else which you do like. Um, there will be probably something which you like. If it's, I hope it's not going to be, be be on your phone all the time. It's probably something. And I really want to thank uh, uh, Jet from uh, and Hiroshi from Deco. Uh, Attila from Forpex, Vinar, uh, uh, I want to thank Ali from Motor Bicycles and uh, Adam from Fastline Industries. And of course you. Awesome. Yes. Thanks Congratulations. Much. Yes, on the award once again. It's been a pleasure catching up with you. That was the CSA Van Berkel interview. Hope you enjoy it.
Drop us a comment. Tell us what you liked about it. Thank Peace. you. Peace out.